has been said, this, um, I'm going to talk about uh, a new programme that we're putting together at the moment. It's very much under development, which is under the banner of Food Advanced Training Partnership. Um, so where this has come from is we're funded by the BBSRC <coughs> under an Advanced Training Partnership scheme to develop postgraduate level training courses for uh, food industry um, employees. So the courses at the very heart need to be very flexible because of the, um, the people we're targeting the mat in terms of the time they have available to them to study, etc. So we're in partnership with a number of other organisations. So we're at the lead of this at the University of Reading. Um, the University of Birmingham are involved in um, the uh, programmes delivery. Um, Rotherham Stead Research and then the Head Food Research, as well as the backing from the BBSRC. Um, hopefully this works, yes. So, just a bit of background on what Advanced Training Partnership is. Um, so it's funded by the BBSRC and we have five years of funding, and quite generous funding, um, to enable us to set up these programmes. We're one year into this and we've just, at the outset, of starting to deliver some of our programmes. So what I'm going to show you is, um, so I talk a bit about the context of what we're doing, but also show you some of the materials that we've developed to enable us to, to deliver these courses. So what we're aiming to do is deliver modular postgraduate training and also research opportunities. So we're using a modular approach to building up programmes that will lead to, to master's qualifications, but also to professional doctorates. So a big part of that is um, a research component. And as I said, it's delivered by a collaborative partnership. So not all of what we'll be doing will be based at Reading. Some of it will be from the University of Birmingham, bringing in other partners like Rotherham State Research, Leatherhead Food Research, to bring in their expertise as part of the training. It's also a partnership with industry. So at the very outset of putting together the proposal that won the funding for this, we consulted with industry about what did they want from this kind of programme. What were their needs? How would it work for them in terms of how we could structure our programmes um, to enable industry in, uh, professionals to um, participate whilst carrying on in their day-to-day -day roles? And so from all of that, we sort of set up some, you know, some of our, our aims. We're looking to deliver skills in the context of tackling major food security challenges that the food industry is facing. Um, so to develop some of the more joined up thinking maybe that, that's needed across that industry to tackle some of those challenges. So that's kind of like the high level thing, but then really it's down to supporting and accelerating individuals in terms of their professional career development. And for the food industry to, for, to enable them to retain talent. So the, the talented people that they have to give them opportunities to develop and stay within the industry and also within the individual organisations that are supporting this. So when we went, and we, we, we are Continually, continuing to be engaged with industry. So we have an industry management committee, as we call them, They're basically our advisory group, to steer the direction of um, the types of skills we're training people in, but also how we're, we're delivering that. And what they're after is uh, modular training, really. Something that can be built up um, over a number of years on a part-time basis, um, but built of modules that could be taken in a standalone way. So at the lowest level, someone could take um, the modules that we're putting together as <coughs> part of these programmes, just self-contained as a single piece of continuing professional development. What we're hoping they do is to build those on um, towards formal qualifications, master's level, etc. The key thing is to be able to balance the study that the people are doing um, with their existing work commitments. So the amount of time that people are taking out of work is a key thing that we have to bear in mind in terms of the type of learning activities we're using. 
With that in mind, one idea could have been to say, let's have a con completely distance learning course where there's no contact time. So everything's done basically in your own time um, through logging <coughs> into something like Blackboard. Um, but actually, what the industry was wanting, although they don't want to have a lot of their time taken up, they really value the networking. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot to be gained from getting people from diverse backgrounds to the industry in the same room so they can learn from one another and also make contacts that will help them in the future. So how we've sort of pieced the puzzle together, the kind of approach we're, we're starting with is to use a blended learning approach. So we, we look at um, our modules in, in three blocks really. So here we, you know, we're basing most of the modules around a 10 credit um, master's level module. So somewhere in there we've got to find 100 hours of study time. Um, and we've got to think, we, one thing that was very clear is that we, we can't be asking people to you know, take an hour out a week to come along to Reading or Birmingham or wherever um, for lectures. We need to condense any of the contact time into a, into a, into a single week essentially. So we've got this sort of three stages of, of the modules, starting out with some distance learning. The idea here is to use that distance learning to deliver the fundamentals of the topic. So we're using things like video lectures, leading into guided reading, using with moderate success discussion boards, self-assessment quizzes, so that when somebody's looked at a lecture, done some reading, and then actually test that they feel that they've understood um, what they've, they've been exposed to. But the idea in this, this first part of distance learning, which would be over about a period of four to six weeks, would be that at their own pace, the learner can go through this and get a foundation in, in a particular topic, so that then in the study week, so literally over a week, um, we can assume that knowledge and build on it during that week and do more interactive things. The last thing we want to do when we've very much pitched it this way is to be getting people into a room and talking at them. What we want to do is get people into the room and provoke them in a way by through an issue or a question but getting them to, to discuss with each other and think through together. <coughs> the different issues or the topics that we want to discuss. And so there's interactive group work, workshops, class debates, these kinds of things. Um, and then following off from that, there would be things that go on beyond the study room, particularly in terms of assignments, um, because obviously we need to assess this in some way. So, just to take an example of one module that um, we've recently run, which was in the area of diet quality and health, in a 10 credit module. Um, what I want to show you, and hopefully this will work, is um, the distance learning part of that, so how that's structured. Um, and we've done that using Blackboard. Let's see if this actually goes below. Not quite. Okay, so so we get the students to, to log into this, this module and they're confronted with um, various learning materials. Now, I should mention that we've been very ably assisted by um, um, Luke Mickleff in, in digital development with putting this together and we've seconded some of his time um, for doing that. So what we've done is we've structured these and actually the way this worked was when they came in at the start, they would have only seen what's labelled as week one. And then we released the materials over time. Now, then we did that because in a previous module, we were, we'd given them all the material in one go, and they said, oh, this is too much, we didn't know where to start. <coughs> so please, can you phase the delivery? Funnily enough, we then had feedback after this one, saying, oh, it would be nice to have that. Oh, please, have But... There's a clearly that you need to signpost the route through, I think, is, is, is clearly what we're learning. So we're going to try and do a halfway house between the two and see where that takes us. Um, but in terms of doing sort of a, um, 
um, uh, a controlled release, I guess, of the, the learning materials. I'm trying to figure out, remember what the blackboard term for that is. Um, adaptive release, I think it is. <laughs> you, can, you can use that as points in time when you can, you can prompt them that they should be engaging with this. So we would release the material and then send them an email to say this is now available, you should be up to this point. If we look into one of these, so the week one, the module introduction. Um, so in this case, um, what we had is uh, when, they, when they click into that, they get a, a, a series of five pages in this case. There's some introductory text here, but essentially there's a, there's a video lecture. Um, Danny's not in the room, so I don't think. So, so it's just, um, and I don't know if we've got any sound. It's probably for the best. But we've got essentially the PowerPoint slides here, and we've got a video of, oh, I'm in trouble, of the, of the guy talking in the corner. And so where we can go, through this is then there's another lecture that was here, um, an opportunity to damage the main slides. There was a, a further one, but as we feed through, there's a few different 15 minute lectures to go through, and then some links to guided reading. And these are all linked so that, so that they don't have to spend ages trying to find this material. It's all linked through for them so they can find it easily with contacts to, to Jack the Skinner there. For any assistance. So we ask them to go through that, and then we have the study week, our study week assignment. The sorts of things then we're doing in the study week are around having things where the workshops, discussion sessions, I mean the topics might not mean anything to you, but it's more active rather than people being talked at. In terms of the programs themselves, these modular building blocks are designed so they can build the routes flexibly at their own pace. Um, and there are various flexible point points for jumping on and off. So we don't have a fixed time in the year when somebody has to start the program. We also can, you know, if they find that they get to a point and they can't take it anymore, we can see what we can do to make sure they can leave with something to show um, for, you know, whether it's a postgraduate certificate, diploma. What have you. I think one thing that we've, we're thinking of as we're going through is, you know, we want, we've got this want, this desire to have the modules as standalone, but then that does give you problems because what about prerequisites? How do you get things to build through so you can take it to a higher level? So these are things that we're, we're sort of struggling with as we go along. Mm -hmm.